what's going on guys I am the walrus Jedi and uh, for uh, today's video I will be uh, talking about the uh, cancelled Star Wars video games over the years and uh, uh, there are uh, in this video I'll be uh, covering 32 games yeah, uh, if you like this video then please consider liking and subscribing for uh, other Star Wars videos in the future and uh, without further ado let's get to the first game which is Star Wars 1313 and uh, Star Wars 1313 is a uh, third-person action-adventure game which was developed and uh, published and was to be published by LucasArts for uh, Microsoft Windows PS4 and Xbox one it would have been rated M, and uh, you would have played a younger Boba Fett on Coruscant on level 1313. The game takes place uh, starting at about 10 BBY, or, you know, before the Battle of Yavin, and goes to 5 BBY, and, uh, yeah, the player would have begun the game playing an unidentified bounty hunter, who is killed by Boba Fett, and then you would play as him for the rest of the game, transferring or traversing Coruscant's notorious level 1313. You would have used various exotic weapons and uncover a criminal conspiracy. And this game was announced at Electronic Entertainment Expo, or E3, in June 2012. It was supposed to be in with the. It, it was supposed to tie in with the uh, Star Wars Underworld TV show that George Lucas was making. This game was in limbo after Disney bought Lucasfilm on October 30th, 2012. And then on April 3rd, 2013, so like five months later, well, oh, six months later, uh, Disney closed down LucasArts and laid off its staff thus killing 1313 and several other projects. Next up is Star Wars Attack Squadrons. Uh, Attack Squadrons, an online browser-based space combat game developed by Area 52 Games and Disney Interactive Worlds and was to be published by LucasArts and Disney Interactive for PC. The game would have had modifiable ships and up to 16 player matches in three modes there would have been several maps including the death star 2 over endor they announced this game in a teaser trailer on december 17th 2013 with a closed beta that began january 2014 once may 2014 came around they announced that it was cancelled Next is Star Wars Battle of the Sith Lords. Battle of the Sith Lords with the working title Maul was the tagline for a game to be developed by Redfly Studio and published by LucasArts for PC, Xbox 360, PS3, and Wii U. The studio expected a mature rating. It would have been an action-centric gameplay. It would have been a game... Uh, with action-centric gameplay, with stealth elements and more realistic lightsaber combat, which allowed for dismemberment, including decapitation. Due to this game being set 130 ABY, or 130 years after A New Hope, and George Lucas wanting Maul to work with Darth Talon, this would have been a descendant or a clone of Maul, rather than the actual Maul that we know and love. And, uh, yeah, and Maul, uh, Maul and Talon, you know, fighting together, Darth Krait and his Sith army. This game's designs and storylines would have differed from Maul's descendant and Talon would have been both playable. When playing Maul, a probe droid and Talon could be companions with the droid scanning the environment and marking threats, whereas Talon could attack when uh, given orders or commands. Some locations for the game would have been a Black Sun spaceport, a jungle planet near a red dwarf, 
and a base on an asteroid, which would have served as Maul and Talon's base of operations for the game. On June 24th, 2011, via an email, the game was cancelled due to the Disney purchase and LucasArts not signing off on any of the big-ticket items that would allow development to truly get underway. All right, next is Star Wars Battlefront 3. Ooh, a, a doozy. All right, Battlefront 3 was developed by Free Radical Design and supposed to be published by LucasArts, continuing to advance and grow from the previous two games in the Battlefront series. Uh, the third one would have allowed seamless transition from ground battles to space battles via taking off and landing ships. In 2006, LucasArts and Free Radical Design reacted or reached a deal to make Battlefront 3 with development starting that same year. It was to be more ambitious than its predecessors in scope and technologies. It was to be released in October 2008. By January 2008, Free Radical Design told LucasArts that they would be unable to have Battlefront 3 ready for release by October 2008, so they pushed the release date to April 2009. Several factors hindered development, such as new generation of consoles, uh, a need for bigger workforce, and changes in the game design. That same year saw changes to LucasArts management, and Free Radical was struggling to reach deadlines, leading to the deterioration of the publisher-developer relationship. And then in the same month it was originally supposed to release, October of 2008, it was cancelled. Some assets created for Battlefront 3 were used in the Star Wars game, uh, ba Star Wars Battlefront Elite Squadron. And uh, next is Star Wars Dark Squadron. Dark Squadron was an action game to be developed by Factor 5 and published by LucasArts. It would have been a part of the Star Wars Rogue Squadron game series. It would have had the player play the Empire, crushing the Rebels. It was cancelled due to LucasArts favoring the untitled Chewbacca game, which was also cancelled. Next is a Death Star game which uh, was to be developed and published by LucasArts and released on the iOS. So it's a, you know, it's a mobile game. And uh, this would have allowed you to play the Death Star, I guess. Fly around, blowing up planets and stuff. Next is Star Wars Episode Seven: Shadows of the Sith. And uh, this would have allowed, uh, you would have been a, an adult. Ben Skywalker struggles struggling with the dark side and unleashed and unleashing a new force powers as he investigates a new threat to the galaxy, a member of house solo. And, uh, that's, that's basically all the information on this game. There's no, uh, who it was to be developed by in that. And, uh, yeah, next is star Wars return of the Jedi Ewok adventure. Ewok adventure was an action game to be published by Parker Brothers for the Atari 2600 and was scheduled for release November 1983. And in this game, you play as an Ewok, hang gliding over treacherous ground to reach the Imperial Generator to blow it up. And next is Star Wars First Assault. And then First Assault was to be developed and published by LucasArts. It was a multiplayer game similar to Battlefront, would have been Rebels versus the empire it was canceled due to disney purchasing lucasfilm star wars imperial commando is next and imperial commando was a sequel to republic commando to be developed by lucasarts you would have played as imperial commandos the elite troops of the empire formed 19 bby fighting rebels of various species and their ships there was to be lightsaber wielding enemies as well that you would have encountered and they never confirmed if you would have played Delta Squad in this game uh, as, um, you know, Delta Squad were Republic Commandos, and at least uh, some of them would have still been there when the Republic became the Empire. So this game was canceled in 2004. 
And next is Star Wars Jedi Knight 3 Brink of Darkness. And Brink of Darkness was to be a sequel to Star Wars Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast, developed by LucasArts, and it would have finished Kyle Katarn's story. After Jedi Knight Jedi Academy, LucasArts decided to not make Jedi Knight 3 Brink of Darkness. So, yeah. And uh, next we have Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 3. Ooh, a big one. KOTOR 3 was an RPG and sequel to KOTOR 2, The Sith Lords, and uh, to be published by LucasArts. It was to release on PC and Xbox 360. Very little is uh, known of the plot, except one of the characters was a woman named Naresha. Chris Avalone, uh, a person that was involved with this game, said this about the game. The third game involved you as a player character following where Revan went and then taking the battle to the really ancient Sith Lords who are far more terrifying than the Darths that show up. These guys would just be monsters. They would have a level of power that was considerable, but at the same time, you'd be able to dig more into their psychologies and their personalities, their history, and even how they dealt with the player. How they talk with the player, the different powers they cultivated and developed, and for some of them, like... They're the ancients, so they're not just ruling a solar system, but swaths of the galaxy. So the places you travel to, you'd see how they left their stamp on that world, or that solar system, or whatever collection of moons. You'd see how horrible that was. Part of that environment would tell a story about that. That would be a great, epic way to end the trilogy, the Old Republic, are out there, we just didn't get a chance to do it. Uh, end quote. The game was cancelled when LucasArts hit a rough patch in development and they had to cancel several projects. Uh, you know, during the early 2000s, you know, 2004, 5, 6, that era. The 13th game is uh, The New Emperor. And uh, New Emperor was to be developed and published by LucasArts in the late 90s. The story set post-Return of the Jedi, with rumors of the Empire naming a new Emperor, C-3PO was to be used as a spy. It was um, it was planned on joining rail actors and blue screen technology for the story of this game, and uh, yeah, that's, that's all the info on that one. Next is Star Wars Outpost. Outpost was to be developed and published by LucasArts. It was Star Wars' version of Farmville, a, allowing the building of empires. It was to be released on browsers and mobile platforms, and it had some hardcore elements like betraying other players for resources and strategy-based gameplay inspired by the likes of Settlers of Catan and EVE Online or EVE online, if that's, yeah, whatever. Either way, it's inspired by that. And uh, next is Project Hermes, and this was a, a game codenamed Project Hermes, and it was to be developed by Lucas Learning in the early 2000s. This was meant to serve as a sequel to Star Wars Super Bombad Racing, was to be released uh 2002 on may 1st 2001 uh it got canceled and then after that we have project ragtag ragtag was to, a game to be developed by visceral games until they closed down and ea vancouver took over and it was to be published by the dreaded ea <laughs> And uh, this game was canceled in early 2019. And next we have Proteus. Proteus was the working title of an MMO developed in-house and would serve as the console-only version of 
the game Star Wars Galaxies and Empire Divided, as that game was only on PCs, like other MMOs, playable species like humans. Quarren and uh, Keldor, going off of concept art, uh, you know, those would have been playable characters. And then some locations would have been Bespin, Corellia, and Sullust. And this game was canceled in 2003 after difficulties in development and whatnot. All right, and then the next uh, is, well, it's not a single game, but it's a few games. It is the Star Wars Rebels, ser Rebel series, rather. And uh, this is a Rebel Agent, where you would have played an unknown Rebel Agent helping the Alliance defeat the Empire. Rebel Fury, which uh, you would have played an unknown... Basically, Rebel Fury... It's unknown what characters, plot, all that. Uh, Rebel Jedi, uh, you play as a Jedi helping the Rebels defeat the Empire. Kind of straightforward. Rebel Scum, and uh, again, this one is kind of unknown, but presumably you're following a smuggler or a similar type of character helping the Rebels beat the Empire. And then you have Rebel Warrior, which you follow a Wookiee warrior driving the Empire out of their home planet, Kashyyyk. All of these were to be published and developed by LucasArts, and they were all third-person action-type games, and they were all canceled for unknown reasons. And next is Star Wars Rogue Squadron X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter. X-Wing vs. TIE Fighter was an MMORPG to be released on Xbox as a launch title. It would have had... Yeah, well, it, it would have featured, you know, warring factions like the Rebels and the Empire fighting. Um, and, you know, this was cancelled. Next is Star Wars Smuggler, or known in development, Star Wars Scum and Villainy, which is a better title than just S Star Wars Smuggler. But All right, Smuggler was to be published by LucasArts, and it began development in 2004. You would have played a smuggler in the Imperial-controlled galaxy, you would have been rewarded for buying low and selling high, with the danger of the Empire giving each decision an edge and, you know, like, have a nice, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And it was to be cross-platform and was to allow a customizable character, and it was cancelled in 2005. All right, next is... Star Wars Battlefront 4 and Battlefront 4 is a uh, you know was continuing the Battlefront series and it was to be developed like the third game free by Free Radical Design and published by LucasArts according to concept art the game's story would have been basically what if scenarios like Luke or Obi-Wan being dark side characters and Maul and Vader being light side characters so basically, doing the old switcheroo. It would have been set post-Return of the Jedi with Rebels versus the Imperial Remnant. Now, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be Rebels. It would be the New Republic, but I am not an expert. They could they could still be the Rebels. at the. T it really depends on exactly when, after Return of the Jedi, it was set. So, But anyways... Some other ideas were Anakin killing Yoda on Naboo, Emperor Palpatine invading Naboo, and Anakin killing Padme in a fit of rage on Mustafar. And this game was canceled with its predecessor, you know, the third Battlefront game, in 2008. Next, we have the Star Wars Wii compilation games, which uh, would be Star Wars Rogue Leaders Rogue Squadron Wii. And this was basically a, a compilation of the three Rogue Squadron games to release on the Nintendo Wii. And this was canceled in 2008 when the, develop, when the developer, Factor 5, went out of business. And then the next game, Star Wars Trilogy, would have included space battles, racing, lightsaber duels. And, you know, it was completed but not released due to financial, due to the financial crisis of 2008. So... Theoretically, this game is just sitting somewhere. 
and could be released. I don't know who who owns it or whatever. Maybe Disney. What? Why not release this for a little bit of money? Eh. Oh, well. Star Wars Rebel Commando. Rebel Commando was one of the two potential sequels uh, to Republic Commando. The Thanks for the assist, Delta. Initiate vector procedures, Delta. On my way. Imperial Commando, and it would have focused on Sev uh, of Delta Squad after he was rescued on Kashyyyk and worked for the Rebels. So, and, you know, it was canceled for unknown reasons in that. And then the 29th game, uh, Star Wars, The Force Unleashed 3. Force Unleashed 3, obviously, is the sequel to The Force Unleashed 2, and it would have been the final installment of the series. It was to be developed and published by LucasArts. It would have released on the Wii U, PS4, and Xbox One. It was going to be more open world than the predecessors, and the story would have followed For Force Unleashed 2's story where Boba Fett would follow and shoot down the Rogue Squadron over a planet, leading former Master and Apprentice Vader and Starkiller to team up to survive and escape. It would have been a co-op game, so two players could have played together, one playing Starkiller and the other playing Vader. It would have been a bit iffy to trust Vader, uh, you don't know if if you could trust him. You don't know where what he's going to do. And uh, Fett being sent by the Emperor was to stop them both from getting off planet. This game was canceled along with several other projects on that fated day, April 3rd, 2013, when Disney torpedoed LucasArts. Next is the entitled Chewbacca game. And this game was to be developed by Factor 5 and published by LucasArts. And you would have played as Chewie working uh, as a mercenary, and it's set after Revenge of the Sith. Uh, this game was canceled on George Lucas's order, so he he killed it. So, shame, because I actually really like the that premise. And uh, next is an untitled fighting game. And this game was supposed to release in 2005 on the Xbox, as seen in the demo for the game, Darth Maul and Revenge of the Sith Anakin were playable characters, and Death Star 2 was one of the locations that you would go to in it. And the gameplay uh, would have had saber dueling, kicking, punching, flipping, stabbing, slow motion sequences, and force pushes. You know, kind of, it's a fighting game, pretty kind of standard. Basically, just picture like, I don't know, uh, any fighting game you want, but. Star Wars Defy It. There you go. And then the last game on the list is Vernost. And Vernost was to be a game on the Mirage Flight Simulator, developed by LucasArts and published by Hughes Training. Rebels and Imperials would have fought over the planet Vernost, the only source of Sela, and Sela serves as a source of fuel and medicine. And now a moment of silence for these fallen games. Now, one game that I wish was made is, you know, Rebel Commando, um, where you you know you follow Sev, and uh, you you basically it kind of resolves the ending of Republic Commando, and and that would have been uh, that would have been what I would have chose. Uh, but honestly, there's tons of games that should have been made on this list, and here's one game that I'm glad they didn't make. And uh, that's the New Emperor. Um, this, the premise at least, the New Emperor stuff where they're like choosing an emperor, whatever. But C-3PO is a spy? I don't know. That sounds kind of kind of lame. I don't know. Maybe, maybe as a short story or something, but not a video game that you would play. That sounds dull and boring. But yeah, so now uh, 
my thoughts. Well, uh, there's a lot of a lot of games, and what's cool is it's it's variety. It's not just the same type of game. Yeah, there's a lot of kind of battlefront type games on the list, but there's also Kotor three. That's an RPG, and you know Force Unleashed three is is not a shooter and stuff. Yeah, but like all of these, there's a like at least half of them. I feel like should have got made. It's a shame. Like thirteen thirteen the battle of the Sith Lords that sounded awesome. Even if it was a descendant of Darth Maul or clone or whatever, who cares? It, it just would have been cool to play as a video game. Just have some fun. It doesn't have to be canon to the timeline. Like it's a video game. Just have some fun. So yeah, there's, there's, there's only a few games that I think are a good decision that they, didn't get made but yeah so uh well you know that was several games and yeah it was also you know an interesting mix of genres and eras uh i feel like there's something that yeah for everyone here and there are a handful that really should have been made as previously mentioned kotor 3 force unleashed 3 um and one thing that I would like to mention, Battlefront 4 being like what if scenario like that, I would have preferred that over Battlefront 3 just because it, I would have liked to see all the awesome, cool, you know, what if scenarios. I think that's a fun idea for a game, comic, any any story like what ifs can be really fun. So, you know, and and there are a few that it's good that the that were never made like project hermes a sequel to super bomb bad racing did it need a sequel and it i don't know whatever and uh yeah which games do you wish were made and you know are there any that you're glad weren't made um and another question are there any star wars games that did get made that you wish weren't made uh, you can let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, thanks for watching.